Well, thank you all for coming, and I really, uh, I really hope that uh, you have enjoyed the camaraderie at your table and had a, a great uh, time to get to know each other and are prepared now for the ceremony of, of the evening. This is really a, really a splendid evening to remember uh, and no better time to celebrate than this uh, Engineers Week is when we have this meeting every year. So Engin Engineers Week is the only event of its kind and, and more than a week long, and by the way, and this year-round uh, uh, commitment to making a difference. It's time to celebrate how engineers make a difference in our world, increase public dialogue about the need for engineers, and bring engineering into the life for kids, educators, and parents. In fact, there's never been a better time for engineering than at the moment, as a matter of fact. Every country, every company, every university is hungry for engineers. That ha hasn't happened before in my lifetime. To that end, our award recipients were supposed to talk th this morning to Thomas Edison High School, but of course the snow prevented that, so the high school kids are disappointed. Our speakers may be relieved, and, and, um, and basically uh, they'll get a chance to talk to them again at some future time. And now I'm very pleased to recognize our special guests this evening uh, and, uh, and various supporters. Now, representing the Russ family is, of course, uh, Mildred Midge Crum, Fritz Russ's sister. Midge, thank you, thank you very much. Midge comes to every one of these events, and she is a star of the, of the family, and we're very much pleased that she is so dedicated to this. Now, representing Ohio University, we have the new president of Ohio, Ohio University, Dr. Dwayne Nellis. Dwayne, thank you very much. And uh, the executive vice president and provost, uh, Shaden Julali. Thank you, Ben, thank you. And uh, Dennis Irwin, the Dean of uh, Engineering of the Russ College of Engineering. Dennis, there we are. I, I don't see you, but I, I presume you're here. And, um, and Nico Karadogosian, the Vice President for Advancement. Nico, thank you very much. I also warmly welcome members of the Russ Prize Selection Committee, of which there are many here today, and the many faculty members and friends and colleagues of this year's Rush Prize uh, recipients. Uh, we are really very pleased to have you all come here. Maybe all of you just raise your hands and so forth so we can give you all a hand. All right, Bill, raise your hand, that's good, good. Norbert, thank you very much. By the way, this committee works extremely hard and they work, work very carefully and it's probably the most collegial prize committee we have at, at the Academy is the Russ Prize Committee. It really works extremely well. Now this, um, this uh, prestigious Fritz J. and Doris H. Russ Prize honors the creators of the world's most important bioengineering achievements. So now let's enjoy really a short video on the Russ Prize and this year's recipients. It's about six minutes. The Russ Prize is the premier prize in bioengineering. It was originally awarded in the year 2001 and is awarded every other year. It's awarded by the National Academy of Engineering in cooperation with Ohio University. Fritz was one of the original entrepreneurs after World War II in the electronics industry. He and his wife Dolores formed their company in the early 1950s. They dug the foundation for their original building themselves. When they sold the company in 1987, it was one of the largest engineering consulting firms in the country. They lived modestly, even though they were, they were very wealthy people at the end of their lives. They started the award because Fritz was always concerned that the Nobel Prize was not awarded in engineering. He conceived the Russ Prize to fill that gap. The type of person that would win the Russ Prize is someone who would take a basic scientific concept, apply engineering principles, and solve a practical problem. That practical problem, in the case of the Russ Prize, would have significant impact, be in widespread use, and improve the human condition. 
Fritz was known for thinking 20 or 30 years into the future. In fact, I would say that his impact on Ohio University itself is to inspire us and to set the example for long-term visionary thinking. Examples of past winners of the Russ Prize have included the inventors of the implantable heart pacemaker, the inventor of kidney dialysis, the inventor of the automated DNA sequencer, and the inventor of the enabling technology for heart-lung machines. The Russes wanted to ensure in perpetuity that achievements such as these continue to be awarded and thereby inspiring a new generation of engineers. The 2019 Fritz J. and Dolores H. Russ Prize is awarded to Julio Palmas, Leonard Pinchuk, Richard Schatz, John Simpson, and Paul Yock for innovations leading to the widespread adoption of percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI. PCI previously known as coronary angioplasty, is a minimally invasive procedure that uses a catheter to place a small structure called a stent that opens up blood vessels in the heart. Tens of millions of people have benefited from PCI, which has replaced or significantly delayed the need for open heart coronary bypass surgery. Julio Palmas, Ashbell Smith Professor at the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio, invented the first FDA-approved balloon expandable stent in 1990. In 1994, a collaboration with Richard Schatz led to a modified coronary stent. Two Palmas stents joined by a single connector that became the gold standard for every subsequent FDA-approved stent. Leonard Pinchuk, a biomedical engineering inventor and entrepreneur, contributed to major advancements in medicine, including the Nylon 12 angioplasty balloon, helical wire stents, glaucoma tubes, and the next generation intraocular lens. He has co-founded 10 companies, holds 128 U.S. patents, and is a distinguished research professor of biomedical engineering at the University of Miami. Richard Schatz is Research Director of Cardiovascular Interventions at the Scripps Heart, Lung and Vascular Center and Director of Gene and Stem Cell Therapy. His work at the inception of stent development, notably with the creation of the Palmal Schatz stent, contributed to the revolution in treatment of coronary artery disease, directly impacting the over 2 million stent recipients worldwide each year. John Simpson advanced the field of PCI by developing a new catheter system for coronary angioplasty utilizing a steerable guide wire located inside the balloon catheter. This was essential for reaching blockages in tortuous blood vessel segments. The many companies he has founded continue to push this technology forward. Paul Yock, the Martha Meyer Wieland Professor of Medicine and founding co-chair of Stanford's Department of Bioengineering, holds over 50 U.S. patents and is internationally known for his work in inventing, developing, and testing new devices, including the rapid exchange stenting and balloon angioplasty system, which is now the primary system in use worldwide. PCI is heralded as one of the most important advances in the treatment of coronary artery disease. By increasing blood flow in a minimally invasive way, PCI has improved and saved the lives of tens of millions of people worldwide and continues the legacy of pioneering innovators that the Russ Prize recognizes. PCI was made possible by the groundbreaking work of Julio Palmas, Leonard Pinchuk, Richard Schatz, John Simpson, and Paul Yock. And for this, the NAE awards these pioneers with the 2019 Fritz J. and Dolores H. Russ Prize. So, so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Dwayne Nellis, the president of Ohio University, uh, who will assist me uh, with the presentations. 
Dwayne. Okay, the, uh, the Russ Prize recognizes bioengineering achievements in uh, widespread global use that improves the human condition. That is a very important requirement. Re recipients share a $500,000 award, and each receives a commemorative medallion and certificate as well. In addition, the recipients will present a lecture in Athens, Ohio, hosted by Ohio University. Time and date to be determined. In addition, the recipients will present, um, uh, sorry, the, the Fritz, uh, 2019 Fritz J. and Dolores H. Russ Prize recipients are the five people that you have just heard about. The, their citation reads, for innovations in medical devices that enable minimally invasive angioplasty treatment of advanced coronary art disease. The percutaneous coronary, coronary intervention, PCI, also called percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty is a minimally invasive procedure that uses a catheter to place a small structure called a stent to open the blood vessels in the heart that had been narrowed by plaque buildup. PCI improves blood flow, thus decreasing heart-related chest pain and possibly death, as a matter of fact, making patients feel better and increasing their ability to be active. Tens of millions of patients worldwide have benefited from PCI, as you heard, and the procedure has um, replaced or significantly delayed the need for open heart coronary bypass surgery. Now I would like to ask the honorees uh, to come forward, uh, as their names are called, to receive their awards. And, uh, and each uh, award winner, after receiving their award, will stand on the stage uh, with, uh, with Dwayne Nellis and, and, and and me until the last person is uh, here, and then we'll have a kind of group snap photo of all of us. So it's really a very important moment. So the first one I'd like to call is uh, Dr. Leonard Pinchuk, President and CEO of Innovia LLC. Len Len's a distinguished research professor of biomedical engineering in the Department of Biomedical Engineering at the University of Miami. And next, uh, I would like um, Dr. Richard A. Schatz to come to the stage. Richard. He's the, uh, he's the research director of the Scripps, uh, Scripps Clinic. Now, uh, Dr. John B. Simpson, staff cardiologist, Sequoia Hospital.
And uh, our, our final recipient for tonight is Dr. Paul G. Yock, the Martha Meyer Whelan Professor of Medicine and founding co-chair of Stanford's Department of Bioengineering. Turn. Your turn. <laughs> My turn. Uh, I'm shocked uh, that this is a reality. Uh, when I got the call, I thought, mm, no, really. Uh, this can't be really true. Uh, but what a thrilling event uh, for me and for all my colleagues uh, tonight. And also for the, uh, I want to thank uh, initially for sure uh, the Rush family. It's just like, it's just, it's just incredible. And so I know that Fritz's uh, uh, sister is here, I believe. Is that correct, Nate? Just can you just raise your hand really high? A little high? Okay, that's good. <laughs> so, uh, and so I think that's fascinating. But maybe all of the members of the family, and we saw the photograph being taken. And there's more than two or three of you. Uh, I understand that. Hands up, also. Every member of the press, this is, so this is absolutely, this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So I did a little research um, on Fritz and Fritz's father. Um, and I understand that his father was a farmer. Is that right? Did I get that right? So his, fa his father's a farmer, but he's kind of shy, uh, as I understand it. And also Fritz, I think, was kind of shy. Uh, but uh, Dolores, maybe not so shy. <laughs> and so Dolores uh, seemed to give some direction uh, to the way things uh, worked, around, worked out around the, around the house, let's say, and maybe also at SRL. So uh, the research laboratories that they found, which is mind-boggling in a way, I think, that you could, when you think about the era uh, that Fritz was operating in, I mean, right now you might think it's kind of, he had sort of the startup mentality. Uh, perhaps an early entrepreneur, but in that era, it was just unprecedented. 
and then to believe that you could come up with a strategy for, for developing SRL, uh, number one, but also then to have the vision to support a, uh, a, a, a prize, uh, of course, which I agree with uh, Dr. Moat that this is the most impressive prize in the industry. I mean, it's obviously, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not, I mean, who, who would dispute that? Uh, you can raise your hand. No, don't raise your hand if you would dispute, if you dispute how important that this prize is. But uh, to believe that he could have the vision to do that, and then, uh, you know, I, I think what happens in, in our space, and certainly uh, all of my colleagues, I think, would agree, is that the way that we progress is that we stand on the show. The reason we can see a little bit farther than everybody else is because we stand on their shoulders, right? That's the old adage, we see farther because we stand on the shoulders of giants from before. And, uh, you know, Fritz is definitely one of the giants, I think, in, in the industry and somebody that we stand on his shoulders. Another sh uh, shoulder, a group of shoulders that we stand on is interventional cardiologists or the shoulders of, uh, of Mason Soans, who did the very first uh, coronary angiogram. Uh, and, uh, and then also address Grunzig, who did the first balloon procedure ever performed in man. So the, these, uh, these amazing uh, animations that you see where the little balloon goes out and, and it pushes all the material to the side and it works perfectly every time, that's great, except it's not like that in reality, right? So Grunzig was the guy who had the courage, and uh, he was in Zurich at the time, who had the courage to initiate this procedure in humans when, hmm, I don't know if uh, so many of us thought it was a great idea. And I actually heard Grunza give a talk at Stanford. Um, my wife, uh, who's here, picked me up from the talk, and I said, she said, what was that about? And I said, well, uh, it was noon conference at Stanford, and, and she said, well, why'd you go? And I said, well, it was a, it was a free sandwich. Um, <laughs> so that was a good reason to go to the noon conference. But uh, I said, this guy is going to revolutionize the treatment of vascular disease. He's gonna to go to jail, and I favor jail. Uh, would be is so radical, radically different than anybody else would have anticipated at that particular moment that you would actually take a small little balloon catheter, I mean, it, put it in somebody's heart, blow the balloon up, and they're going to get better. Uh, and it seems like now it's so obvious. Now you put a stent on the balloon, the, the stent holds the material to the side, uh, and it's, it, it's sort of obvious, but you can imagine in that era telling the surgeons that we're gonna take the patients, normally we would send them to you for a bypass, but now we're gonna do it a little bit differently. We'll take a piece of plastic with the balloon on the end of it, we're gonna blow it up, and, and you, don't have a, you don't have to treat this patient anymore. Profoundly controversial. I'm sure very much like the controversies that might have surrounded Fritz um, when he uh, maybe was even saying, let's set up the prize. Um, it, it seems to me like that would have been a, a definitely swimming upstream uh, in, in that era. And so the, other, the, the thing that really uh, separates me from a lot of people, except the, these guys up here, is that I've known how to rely on engineers. I'm not a formally trained engineer. I feel like I have all my uh, engineering training on the job uh, training. Uh, I've had very good on the job training because I've worked with a lot of really, really good uh, engineers. So the, the whole engineering uh, aspect to all of this, and that's what I think Fritz had a great insight into, is that physicians by themselves are not going to be quite so effective. Engineers by themselves are maybe not going to be quite so effective, but engineers and physicians working together to solve a problem that is really, in, in, uh, say, an important problem that, it, that we're confronting in the, in the world uh, will give us a special opportunity. It's kind of this sort of collaboration that really sets, the, uh, sets up the opportunity to do something really special. And I think about the engineers that I've worked with uh, over the years. Uh, and one of the first engineers I worked with that actually uh, designed something on the nose gear of the Grumman spacecraft, I uh, mean, the Grumman fighter jet. And then he did some stuff in aerospace. And then he ends up doing stuff with balloon angioplasty in the coronary arteries. It's, it's like, the engineering expertise that transfers, uh, uh, sophisticated engineering skill sets transfer really, really nicely between different serious problems. And serious problems related to coronary artery disease, serious problems related to designing nose gears on uh, fighter jets, uh, they're surprisingly similar. 
And I also reflect on my very first balloon angioplasty that I ever made. I made it from the electrical insulation from the F4 Phantom. And you say, well, I don't know, you know, the insulation off of the Phantom, I mean, why would, why would you do that? It's because it was the only thing that was available. It was not like, you know, any great insight into anything. And the Raychem Corporation had some that was the right size, and I said, well, how, how do I get that? And they said, you can have this because we're not using it right now because we've, all the Phantom jets are pretty much produced. So you could have some. It was, actually, it was free. And free in this world, it doesn't occur very often. I can, I can promise you that. And so you could think that, that you know, the, the Phantom jet, electrical insulation, the right size, the plastic, heat shrink uh, materials, all of this derived from the electronics industry, uh, from the engineering, and it ends up in patients' hearts. Uh, and it's sort of the magical opportunity, I think, when you, you uh, put all this stuff together. So I want to, uh, on behalf of my colleagues, I want to uh, tell all of you how grateful we are. We're honored. Hmm. Are we honored? <laughs> hell yes, hell yes, we're, we're honored. So. Thank you. Well, thank you, John, for your remarks, and uh, hearty congratulations to our winners. Uh, you really have uh, set the high standard for this prize very, very well. I thank you very much for that. By the way, the, uh, one, one addition to the uh, video when it, when it talked about the Nobel Prize not being given to engineers. This year, there were eight Nobel Prizes given in the United States. Th three of them went to engineers, as a matter of fact, even though the Nobel Prize is not given to engineers. <coughs> So thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed uh, uh, this honoring these very distinguished guests and you enjoy this evening, the camaraderie around your tables and the spirit of the whole event. Um, it, it's really meant a lot to us uh, at the Academy and I'm sure it meant a lot to Ohio University as well. And it's, it's a, this is a great honor and we thank everyone for coming. So please uh, join us in the West Court again uh, for, for dessert. This West Court's where you came to get drinks to start with, so you can probably get drinks on your way out as well. So thank you, and, and, and I'll see you in there for dessert.